Welcome to this video. I will try and show how you can manage people inside Microsoft Teams using the add-in called Team Planner. So to get started, right now I am inside a team called the Mark 8 Project Team. For each of these teams, I would like to request resources to do the work for me by sending a request towards the line managers or the resource managers. So on the left side, I have the application called Team Planner. And if I launch this one, it will in full screen open up the application. And right now it opened it up in the project or team called the Boston Demo. So let's just try and find that other project or team we just created, which was in this case called the Mark 8 project. So opening up that one will show you that someone already went in and defined a requirement for different roles for that specific team. In this case, these amount of hours over this amount of period for developers, managers, consultants, uh, and other consultants defined by either consultants from Netherlands or Denmark. I can also go in and change the header uh, up here, or I can remove them if they're not needed anymore. And just to show you quickly how that works, because it's really easy, is that you just click on the resource pane here, and it shows me all the available roles that I have or generic resources that I can request for. If there are several in each of these buckets, you will see the number two instead of one. For instance, consultants in Denmark or Netherlands. I can then find someone that I haven't requested yet, which could be in this case, the project manager, and just drag in that role right here to the team, and then go back and say, I would like to get the project manager for 50 hours and then 50 hours, and then maybe 60 hours and then 40 hours, as an example. I could also enter it in FTEs, so one or 0.8, but I've decided to work with hours in this case. If you're really into the details, you could also change the time view up here by selecting either weeks or years. Well, let's just keep it with months right now. Um, then what we can also do is click on this little symbol here, which stands for comments, and add a comment saying, I would like a person that speaks um, German, as an example. Enter. That goes with the request towards the line managers later on. So if you want to group this uh, or even change the wording so that when the receiver or the resource managers gets this request, that they will understand more in details what's going on, what you could do is go in and actually change the header up here. You could just write um, uh, documentation and workshop, for instance, if that's what you want to call it. You could also drag this one up to a higher level and create a group. So now that we're doing that, you'll get a, a group up here what you can then call, for instance, phase one or deliverable A, and then drag each of these requests into that bucket up here to sort of better uh, combine the different requests into something that makes sense for the receiver of the request. So let's just stay with this and now try to change the role and log on as a resource manager. And because I'm the super user and admin of this system, I can go up here and simply just change the view. So we have re request and allocation and allocation view that's for the resource managers. So clicking here opens up the same project, but what I can see are all the requests and the structure and the comments that are impacting my business unit, business line or team. So what I can do on the right side is again, open up the resource view, but under each of these, in this case, I have three consultants you will find the real people that I'm in charge of leading or planning or managing. I can also hover over this bar and see that we are 20% allocated when it comes to Christian. So he's 20% allocated in this period of time up here. It's not the same as saying that he's available uh, every day 80% because he's probably not, but at least we get the first warning if he's completely sold out. If I want to add Christian to this project, I could select him and drag him right into where he's needed. For instance, up here as a developer or as a consultant. Let's select consultant. Then he's added to the team and you can see that he's 57.5 hours available, so free capacity in that specific month, which means that if I go ahead and allocate him 80 hours, he will be in a deficit of 22 and a half hours. Now that might be fine. We'll get back to that. But if it's not fine, we have to balance his workload as a team lead. So let's go ahead and just ignore that he's completely booked like this. And as you can see, every time I meet the request, you'll get this uh, roll up all the way through to here. And everything shows like a warning color because we are still not complying or haven't responded to the full request up here. 
So uh, let's just finish the job and select the developer. That could be this guy. Drag him in here. And again, we could write 120 hours, 60 hours, 120 hours, 40 hours. And as you can see, Jesper is also booked to something already. So nobody so far has time actually to do this work. So let's just stick with this initially to show you how we can sort of figure this out. So let's go back to Christian down here. If we click on Christian's name, it opens up Christian as a person and everything that he's booked to. Um, so it's, this is not only a matter of, you could say, uh, projects or um, customer teams or external teams. It's also the internal work he's assigned to. So it could be, for instance, vacation, training, or whatever you can plan, paternity leave, maternity leave, and so forth. So all of this combined equals his free capacity up here, not just the projects. So if we were to sort of balance his, his workload, right here we can see that we have to find 22 and a half hours. And to do that, we can either go into, for instance, the digital customer portal and decrease his uh, assignments to perhaps 30 hours. And therefore he's now in a, in a plus of seven and a half hours. Um, we could also go in perhaps and split it up. So we say 30 hours here, but then we still have 7.5 hours left. Let's put that to that one. Um, same thing we can do here. Right now he's uh, again booked to this project, Boston Demo plus admin work. So let's remove the admin work at least. Et voila, he's now 25 hours in free capacity. So of course we're right now playing with other people's requests or allocations, um, but at least we can do it from one centralized view in real time with no save, no publish, just real time happening. So when I go back to the project, that rebalancing has already happened. So therefore we see that he has been assigned to this team or this project and he still has free capacity. Same thing could be done for Jesper up here. We click on him, we see what he's working on. And we sort of try to squeeze down whatever else he's doing so that we can get him back to normal. Let's try and do that. Uh, that's fine. And then we'll just accept the 12 hours in deficit. Do the same here, same here, there, there, there. So this that I'm doing right now is what I often see people doing in spreadsheets. And the problem with that is that it doesn't roll up nicely into a database. Therefore, not really useful for sort of anyone else besides the resource manager. With this system, Everything goes into an Azure database and Cosmos uh, database so that you can use that for Power BI reports to do trend analysis or even machine learning. So let's go back again. Now we have allocated a couple of people. They don't have major issues with being over allocated. So that's a good starting point. And obviously the project manager or the team lead for the original request will get that, this information by using notifications that can be sent inside the application through teams or through cards and tiles on a team's chat channel. Um, besides this, we can also use reports. So if we click on reports up here, we can go in and find, for instance, capacity overview or other reports that you have sort of embedded into the application. All of these are Power BI reports. Some of them are out of the box. And as an example, if we select this one, we'll find a simple overview um, showing you deficit and uh, surplus in a heat map overview. Um, demand and capacity over time or available over time. So who's most available, who should we sell? And then we have different views on the same information uh, all the way through to the actual named individuals so that we can see what is a certain role working on. Let's just select, for instance, um, this one. So the contractors for electricity, they are working on these different projects or teams, and this is the availability and demand over time. So if we go back to the application up here, what you can also do um, is to, for instance, go in and configure the system. So we made it very simple for you first off to get upgrades. So you can define if you want to be part of the release cycle called beta or release candidate, production or alpha. You could even go in and actually manually select which different versions you want to use or roll back to a previous version if you just wanted to try it out. We also have integrations for instance, to Project Online or SQL. Um, so if you have other systems running somewhere, you can, you can use that. And then we have also the settings area. Now in the settings area, it's really simple and straightforward to go in and define your resource breakdown structure, set up your basic information such as line managers can edit their own resources or project managers can edit projects. Can we perhaps forward requests to another person or move requests in time and so on and so forth. All the way through to, for instance, setting up the view or the theme with coloring and headers and so forth. So this was what I wanted to show you.
that you can in fact replace your spreadsheets and get this really simple approach to planning your resources based on requests and allocations with connectors using Flow from Azure DevOps, Project for the Web, Project Online, or maybe just Teams in itself or planner boards and simply get the overview on what is the capacity and what is the demand. So I hope you liked it and feel free to reach out at www.projectum.com. Bye.